Today we're gonna to talk about protecting your RV's electrical equipment and electrical systems. That's right, and we're doing a giveaway, so stay tuned. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about protecting your RV's electrical components like your ACs and your computers and TVs and the whole thing. We're also gonna tell you how you can enter to win this guy. Yes, $300 value, so stay tuned till the end so you can find out how to win. Yes. We get asked a lot about surge protectors and that's the term people are used to is a surge protector, right? And you wanna have that, but you wanna have a little bit more. There are two big players in the surge protection industry that we've seen for RVs. Mm -hmm. There is Progressive Industries and Southwire. Both make really great products. In fact, we had a Progressive Industries EMS on our RV since day one. I'm gonna stop here and just interject and let you guys know that I'm not here because I have a wealth of knowledge on electrical stuff. I'm here because I don't and because I have some questions and we thought, you might have the same questions as I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask some questions as we go through. These are not written down or anything. These are just things that randomly pop into my head so some of them might be stupid. <laughs> no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to RVs. Right, but I wanna say when we first started talking about the surge guard and total protection and all that, I got confused because like you just said, there are a couple different companies that make similar products, right. but they have different names. So EMS, total surge protection, mm -hmm. those two are basically the same thing, right? Right, and to be honest with you guys, I've been guilty of calling all total protection systems an EMS, and that's really not accurate. EMS stands for, I think, electrical management system. Yeah. That is what Progressive Industries calls their total protection system, they call it EMS. Mm -hmm. And there's also Southwire. Southwire makes surge protectors and they make a thing called total electrical protection. So we're gonna talk a little bit about a surge protector and something that protects more than just surge. Both companies make both. Both companies also make internal and external units. So we're gonna talk a little bit about those. Okay, yeah. It should be noted that everything we're gonna talk about in regards to surge protectors and total electrical protection and EMS uh, applies to both 50 and 30 amp RVs. Right. The devices we're going to talk about are available in both 30 and 50 amp models. However, our giveaway is just 50 amp. Right. So if you have a 30 amp RV, sorry, we have this one to give away and it's 50 amp. I spent quite a long time working on electronics in the Navy on aircraft, E2C Hawkeyes, and I'm very familiar with electrical systems. First of all, you want to have at least a surge protector. That's the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. If you're looking online and you see something like this that looks just like this, but it's around 100 bucks or less, it's probably just a surge protector. Okay, so please tell me, because I don't know, what just a basic surge protector will protect you from? Surges. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's really it. And therein lies the problem, because you do want to be protected against surges. If you live in a house or wherever, you might have surges from your power grid, you might have surges from storms or whatever. And you wanna be protected against that because that surge of electricity going through your system can burn out components just with you know high current. But in an RV, we take these really nice houses on wheels. You spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on this investment. And we take them to RV parks and we just plug it in and just assume it's good. Probably not. <laughs> you know, a lot of these RV parks are really old. Some are new and just fine. Some are really old. Because you don't know if that giant Prevost next to you has like three ACs running and a jacuzzi and a, I yeah. don't know, movie theater. Sunlands, movie theater. They're drawing a whole bunch of current and they're yeah. going to mess you up. My point is you're plugged into a, a very tight grid when you're in this line of RVs and you know, two or three RVs kick on the right AC in a row, you can get a low voltage scenario or you can get a low voltage scenario just because it's crappy power, you never know. And low voltage is the number one killer of RV AC compressors. And you don't want that to happen. No. 
We do get a lot of questions asked of us about surge protection and what's the best type to use, what should somebody get, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. A lot of people see our videos too, and they, when we're outside and they see our, our hookups, they ask why we don't have a surge protector, because they're used to seeing ones like this. And the answer is we did and we do have more than a surge protector. For our first about year or so, a little, probably a little over mm -hmm. a year, we had the... Progressive Industries EMS. <laughs> we had the Progressive Industries EMS. We had the HW50C, the internal one. But we had that surge protector for about a year, almost a year and a half maybe, and it died. They did send us a new one and we gave that away yeah. at a recent rally. There was no fault with it. No. Right? It was just, it no, did it's, its job. Yeah, it's designed to sacrifice itself for yes. your RV. Mm -hmm. And right around that time, our good friends Eric and Tammy reached out from Techno RV to see if we would like to do a review on the Southwire models. I had talked to him about it before and said, well, we've got one and I don't want to just be swapping it out just to swap it out. Yeah, we, but we, when they recommend a product to us to try, yeah. it's usually a really good product. So. Right. so Eric sent us this to try out. This is the internal unit. And looking at the specs between the Southwire units and the Progressive Industries units, they're very close. They're both very good products. Southwire has a little bit of an edge on some of the specs. You know, talking about jewels and stuff and surge. It's a tiny little bit of an edge on the specs. And I think a little bit bigger of an edge on its display. I want to know what a jewel is. It's not jewels. <laughs> There's a lot of math and complex crap behind it. Just know that a joule is essentially a measurement of energy. Okay. It's how much current and power these things can handle without dying. And, okay. Yeah. I like the display for the south wire a lot better because I can see both lines, amperage and voltage, all in one display versus having a rolling display, which the Progressive Industries had. Now, if you already have the Progressive Industries, it's a great unit. Don't go swapping it out. It's just, we like this one a tiny bit better now. So let's talk a little bit about surge protection versus more than surge protection. A total protection system or an EMS is going to protect you from a lot of other things, namely low voltage. Makes so sense. that'll kill your AC and ACs are important. Yeah. We're not campers here. They're not cheap either to fix. <laughs> yeah. so. so low voltage, okay. under over frequency, meaning that the 60 hertz that you're expecting is high or low. Okay. A good EMS or total surge protection will protect against out of range on both frequency and voltage. It'll protect against things like reverse polarity, like if the pedestal that you're plugging into is somehow reversed and it's all jacked. It'll protect against a miswired pedestal. It will protect against an open ground or open neutral. That can be dangerous. If you've got your RV plugged into a, a pedestal and it doesn't have a good ground, then that means you can become the ground. Mm. Meaning it's wet out, you reach for your RV, and all of a sudden you're the ground circuit. Basic electricity, if your system isn't grounded and you become the ground, it's a bad day for you. Yes. So bottom line is that a lot more can happen than just surges. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what happens when you get one of those conditions? Well, this guy's whole job is to say, go away, shut off. So in other words, if it detects an out of bounds condition like low frequency or low voltage, it's going to shut off power to your whole RV, which is what you want. Your RV does better if power just, it just shuts off, turns everything off versus trying to struggle and run your compressor on low voltage. And that's what happened to us. Yeah, we've had it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Ideally, it does that in a way that it can recover from. And we've had that happen multiple times. Yeah. Power just shuts off. I look on the EMS controller and it'll say low voltage or out of range frequency or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it has a timeout and 128 seconds, I think later, it'll check your connection, see if it's still good or if it has recovered and turn everything back on. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't have something like this, then the likelihood of damaging our ACs or something else in the RV would be a lot higher. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the reason there's that delay put in there is because air conditioning compressors don't like to be shut off and come back on. So we're going to be doing a video on 
power management for RVs, and we're going to talk about 50 amp versus 30 amp versus mm -hmm. 15 versus split 30 versus split 15 versus <sighs> inverting versus power share. I don't we're know gonna, if I'm going to be in that video <laughs> or not. We're going to get into all of that stuff because it's confusing, and it was confusing for us before we started, but this is strictly it's about confusing for me. protecting your RV, but stay tuned for that. Keep watching because the giveaway is coming up. You don't know where in this video the giveaway information is going to be. Yeah. Just had to say that. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the two different kinds, the internal and external. If you're like me and you don't like something this expensive and this nice just hanging outside on the pole, yeah. and you don't want to have to worry about one more thing to hook up and locking it up, that's just me. It's not that big a deal. I make it sound like it's a huge pain, but a lot of people do it. We got one right over there mm -hmm. at our neighbors. And if you're not into AC wiring or you don't know somebody who is and you don't mind having a, an external one, just get this. It's super simple. There's no wiring involved. You plug it into the pedestal and then you plug your cable into it and that's it. Simple. Now, one thing that's really cool about the surge guard models that the Progressive Industries does not have is these pedestal units, you can get an optional wireless remote. Oh. So that you can see what's going on inside your RV without having to schlep outside and look at the control panel that's and cool. see. Yeah, and that that's a huge benefit. That's one of the reasons we wanted an internal in the beginning was I, I like being able to see it inside. But wiring in an RV is a pain in the ass. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're giving away this unit. It does not come with the remote display, but you can order that on your own. Mm -hmm. You don't need the remote display for it to operate. You can see it's got a display on it right there. Another benefit of this type of unit, a plug-in external unit, is that if it dies, it's easy to take out of the loop. You just unplug it and plug your, your line in. So like in the situation that we were in where our EMS died and we didn't have a replacement right away, I had to get down in the basement and do some rewiring to bypass our EMS. It wasn't difficult, but it was much more difficult than just but unplugging But this. don't you think it would be more difficult if somebody didn't have the electrical background that you have? Yes. Yes. Again, that's why I say if you're not comfortable with wiring and electricity, get an external unit. If you are comfortable with wiring and electricity and all that entails, then a unit like this is great. To dispel any fears about the wiring of this, it's four wires. It's really not that difficult and they're all color coded. You've got two hots, a neutral, and a ground. But in. you're going to show them how you installed it. Oh, that's right. I did record <laughs> that. Internal units, whether it's this surge guard or whether it's Progressive Industries, we hope you get the surge guard. We'll have links below for Techno RV. And it's really not that difficult. You've got a cable on the outside of your RV where your power goes in. Behind there is a wire and that wire goes somewhere. Usually it's going to go to an ATS, which is the automatic transfer switch if you have a generator, or it might go straight to your distribution panel. And it's really just a matter of disconnecting wherever that goes to, plugging it into here, and then getting another cable to go from here out to wherever that went before. It's just putting this thing in the line right behind your power plug. Doesn't really get much simpler. Again, though, it's simple for you, babe. Yeah. Because but you, I'm just know, saying, as you far as... know what you're doing. It's very basic to yeah. you, but it's well, not basic to everybody. That's true. Quite honestly, the most difficult part of wiring this for us was getting the wires up here for the control panel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you watched our inverter video, there are a few things we've got in our little tech cabinet up here. We've got our inverter control panel, which is wired. We've got our EMS or surge guard protection system control panel, which is a wired connection. Our battery monitor is a wired connection. And getting the wires from the basement to that panel is a huge pain. <laughs> Well, well, my plan A is taking a I can't emphasize how much I could have used. Maybe just a little bit more room in there, grand design, and the, where the wiring goes, it's tight. Yeah. And uh, I, I worked out a way to do it, but but now you have a system. Yeah, you'll have to figure that one out on your own, or just get it, get the, just get the external unit with the wireless control panel because there's no wiring. Like I said, not everybody knows how to do the wiring part. Yeah, 
Another thing that we do get asked about every now and then when we're talking about surge protection and things like that is a thing called an autoformer. Hughes Electric makes a thing called, makes an autoformer. I think there might be a couple of others, but Hughes is probably the most popular. The whole idea behind an autoformer is it will do some little magic of electronics and turn current into voltage. It basically uses that to keep your voltage the same even if it's low, which is a great idea, but it does that by using extra current and that can affect the overall electrical system of an RV park. Be sure to watch till the end so you can see us mess up in our outtakes. Mm -hmm. You guys know we do it a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready to find out how you can win your surge guard? A quick note about our giveaway. This is a 50 amp model. Mm -hmm. It's all we have is a 50 amp model. Sorry if you have a <laughs> sorry if you need a 30 amp. We don't have that. Yeah, but you can still enter to win, mm -hmm. and if you win it, we'll send it to you with koozies and stuff, and you can give it to somebody you know who has a 50 amp RV. That's right. Thank you to Eric and Tammy. Yeah, you guys are Te awesome. Techno RV for donating this to our viewers for this giveaway. Yes. There are three ways to enter the giveaway. First, you can follow us on Instagram, and then comment on today's post hashtag giveaway. You can also comment on this video in YouTube, comment hashtag giveaway, and you can follow us on Facebook and comment on today's post, hashtag giveaway. You will have seven days from today, the day that this video airs, to enter. Mm -hmm. All the details will be in the description below or in the blog post if you're watching this on our website. Good luck to everyone who enters the giveaway mm -hmm. and don't forget to tell your friends to do the same. By the way, we'll put a couple koozies and a sticker or two in here also. Ooh. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Outtakes. It was a lot of... <laughs> this isn't an outtake, but here's Daisy. For those of you who have missed seeing Daisy in this video, there you go. Look at the camera, Daisy. Look at the camera. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's on video. After you Is it coming out yet? Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was waiting for you to stop doing this. Mm, I trimmed my neck. I, to go out for I trimmed my neck hair for you guys. Okay. Alrighty. Let's do this. We can we can do it. We've got is I get lipstick on there? Did you kiss it? <laughs> It comes with a kiss from Tara, right here. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. What are you doing? Why know. are you being creepy? <laughs> it's like sneaking, <laughs> sneaking up. Huh? Trick or treat, trick or treat. Okay, let's be, let's just be real now. <laughs> okay, you ready? Surge guard, nope. nope. <laughs> Even I knew that was wrong. Yeah, I spent quite a long time working on electric, electrica? Like movie theaters and <laughs> yeah. tanning, and, I don't know. Tanning, does anybody use a tanning bed anymore? Yeah, lots of RVs with tanning, oh bed, my gosh. tanning bedrooms. Okay, what's next? Uh, I want to, what? Arnold Palmer on freshly brushed teeth. Oh, but, so yeah, we've had, we had that try to get our Instagram count up over a thousand. No, 10,000. <laughs> Tell them how to win. I don't know. <laughs> and thank you again to Ta Tara. You're Tara. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> I just froze. I just felt like Jan Brady who stared at the camera. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that one. I know. I'm like, oh, red light. How'd you get so cute? Why are you looking over there? Why are you looking over there? Camera's right here. Camera's right here. Daisy, you stink it. You stink at YouTube.